Questions, we'll start with Charlie here on the right. Yeah, hey coach, just how would you assess Jalen's play in this last game and what do you do to kind of keep his confidence up after the last couple of weeks? Well, I think, um, you know, none of us coach or play well enough in the game Saturday. Um, and that starts with me, you know, um, our ability to execute consistently and take advantage of the opportunities that we were presented. We obviously fell short in that, um, in those spots. And um, it's all of us, we're all involved in that. And, Jalen's an extremely confident player. You know, I have no concerns about that at all. All you know, his preparation creates that confidence for him, and I know he'll get back to work this week, um, just like the rest of our players will. Go far left, Chase. Um, on Saturday, when y'all were checking plays at the line of scrimmage, instead of Jalen just just yelling from the shotgun, we saw him walking straight to both tackles and putting the call right in the right in the ear hole. Was that effective, or, or were there a lot of communication issues despite that? Uh, well, in those environments, you don't really have a choice on how you have to communicate relative to the proximity of one another. You know, you have to get that close to be able to talk. Um, and I would say that we had some communication issues, there's no doubt about it, um, particularly early in the game. I thought as the game went on, our guys settled down and, and uh, adjusted to the crowd. But um, that's something that, you know, moving forward, we'll have to be cleaner and better when we get back to those environments. Second row in the middle, let's go to Matt. Come here with Matt. How much of the run game struggles on Saturday were like y'all sort of self-inflicted or was it something Tennessee was doing? Well, I, I mean, I want to give credit to our opponent, you know, on, on some of the things that they did, but I thought there were some uh, execution issues by all parties, whether it was decision-making um, in lead plays, um, whether it was simple fundamentals or technique. Um, I thought there were some effective runs in the game where guys did a nice job and we were headed up correctly and the runners did a nice job of hard and physical, uh, but it wasn't consistent enough, and certainly that starts with me, you know, and our ability to put them in the best positions to be successful and ask them to do the things that they can do well, and um, there's lots of those things, and we just got to make sure that we tighten that up and do better, you know, because I do think this is a group that can run the ball effectively, um, and we got to make sure that we improve in that area and give them enough shots at it to uh, show what they're capable of, and so we're looking at that first as a staff. Um, and then certainly, you know, identifying the things that we need to improve on, you know, because that's an area where I think we can do a lot better than what we've done. And uh, I know we have the players to do it. I know we have the scheme to do it. I know we have the staff to do it. And so um, that certainly will be a point of emphasis for us um, this week, for sure. Second row on the left, Katie. Did the defense force three turnovers on Saturday and then don't worry, we'll score after eight, but just kind of what was maybe the teaching point of that, of being able to take advantage of those opportunities the defense sets up for you? Just that, you know, that you have to take advantage of those opportunities and those games um, against the teams that you're playing against, you know, and credit our defense for doing that. And uh, to this point, you know, in the games where we've played the best collectively as a team, we've done that. You know, our defense has created turnovers and we've been able to, you know, put points on the board off of those. And unfortunately for us this past week, we, we didn't do that. And uh, that was disappointing um, because I certainly felt like there were opportunities in the game um, for us to capitalize on those. And we didn't do it. And so, you know, it, goes back to um, execution, you know, the calls that you make, you know, obviously, you know, you always reflect on that and what you could have done different, um, but certainly that was a factor in the game, and that was disappointing when we weren't, we weren't able to capitalize on those moments. All right, next, Katie, Kobe. Talk about the struggles and the, the inconsistencies in the running game. How much does that influence your play calling when you get in the red zone in shorter fields? Um, I guess you're, you're always trying to make decisions that you feel help your team win, you know, and that's uh, a, a moving target as the game is progressing. You know, I think some of the things that occurred in the game on Saturday, um, particularly early in the game, is when we were getting behind the chains in second and long situations or third and long, you know, we were in a lot of those in the game. Uh, that makes it harder to, you know, be committed to running the ball when you're in second and long situations. Um, and so, you know, you're just always trying to identify what's going on in the game, you know, how are our players seeing it, what is the opponent trying to do, and how can we best attack them based on what the situation that, you know, occurs. But certainly controlling the line of scrimmage and running the football, um, you know, particularly when you're on the road is important. And, uh, you know, like I said, we have the players to do it, and we have the staff to do it, we have the scheme to do it. And so um, that'll certainly be a, an emphasis for us moving forward. Being on the left side, front row, Colin. Um, 
some responsibility for the offense of Sherman to show over and over. I'm curious, like, what is your message to him post game to make sure he, you know, you know, the weight isn't, you know, impactful. Of, you know, the responsibility of that weight, like, isn't impactful from for weeks to come, and like that he, you know, moves on and, you know, in terms of being a leader and, and kind of the continuation of what you guys want to do. Well, uh, yeah, I think Jalen's made some incredible plays for us this year. You know, I don't think there's any doubt about it, and uh, certainly. Some of the success that we've had offensively, he's been right at the, the forefront of it, and so he knows that, you know. And certainly, you know, when you come up short, there's always plays that you would like back. There's always moments, coaches and players, and that's just not the quarterback. Um, that's everybody, and so you know, that's part of competition. We know we can play better. We have to play better. Um, we have to coach better, you know. And so um, I think everybody, you know, that's that competes at a high level understands what that looks like. And, how to respond and how to, you know, get up off the mat and get back to work and, and get prepared and ready to go play in the next, you know, game. And so, um, that's no different for coaches, players, everybody. You know, when you fall short, you don't do as well as you like, and it's what you expect to and what what the standard is. Um, you got to get up off the ground and, and keep swinging and keep working and have confidence in what you've done. You know, I think that's the biggest message to the guys is that we have seen it. You know, it's not like this is something you're chasing that you haven't done or shown. And so um, that's the message, not just to Jamie, but to the rest of the group is let's get back to playing the type of football we know we're capable of playing. And um, you know, that's our task this week. Hey, Buffalo, go Jack. Hey, Nick. Uh, Coach Kane obviously has a lot of familiarity with Corey Batoon over at, at Missouri. Has he kind of talked with you about what they can do and just what have you noticed in general from their defense on film? Yeah, certainly, you know, any type of crossover um, experiences or Relationships that you have among staff, you always have questions. I would say what great coaches and Coach Batoon uh, is the same is, you know, you you try to adjust what you do based on the, the personnel that you have, and so there's always core fundamentals and principles um, that you know both Kane and Coach you know Batoon share. But each group's a little bit different. Each year is a little bit different, and um, you know I think the way that they play, I think the, the effort, the toughness, the physicality. Um, the disruption of the football. I think those are the things that you see, aside from maybe some similarities schematically, because I think great coaches, like the ones we're going against this week, they just adjust to who they have and what their players do best. And so year to year, that may look different. But I think the style of play and how they play, those are the things that show up, you know, both with, uh, you know, Coach Womack and, and Coach Batum. All right, we've time for three more questions, starting with back row on the left. Moving forward, how do you plan to incorporate veteran receivers like Kendrick Vaughn and Kobe Francis to plan to see the defenses? Well, we're, we're always looking at utilizing all of the personnel that we have and how we can best uh, put our players in a position to be successful. You know, that, that's for every position. You know, um, who can give us the best chance to win? Who practices the best? I think both those guys are really talented players, and I know they're going to have big moments for us here down the stretch. And so, uh, you know. I think not just those two in particular, but all the guys. You know, we, we need everybody, you know, to um, continue to progress, continue to learn, continue to grow, um, so that we can utilize them all, you know, here down the stretch. So if I can want to finish the play. On uh, Jalen's fourth down sneak, first game of the first half, the CD broadcast showed Brian and Jeremy pretending to shoot a basketball on the upside of the field. Is that part of the design of the play or just something spontaneous? Um, yeah, you're talking about the quarterback sneak. Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing on the field that, that you know, we're not coaching. Um, so, so how to answer that. All right, we'll finish up with Cody. Second row here. Yep. Um, the last few weeks, Milrow has been kind of, hasn't been nearly as effective as a runner. I know you're talking about execution, but what have opposing defenses kind of done to limit his effectiveness in that way? I think, that, you know, um, there were some effective runs. Um, there's obviously some read elements of some of those runs. You know, um, where we need to make sure we make the right reads all the time. I think the, the negative yardage plays and going backwards, those, that's really what's hurt us, you know, as far as the production in that standpoint. And some of that has been in the past game. Um, and so just eliminating those, I think, will help us obviously stay ahead of the change, give more at bats as far as just opportunities for that. Um, and so, and you're, you're trying to find new ways and creative ways to, for all your players. Um, you know, obviously you get this far in the season, there's certain things that you have tendencies on, there's certain schemes or sets that you've run plays at before, and you're trying to counter that with other types of schemes. So, um, yeah, I think we got to eliminate the negative plays. You know, we got to, you know, that, that 
would be the biggest thing that I would say is, you know, when, when we have negative yardage plays, um, you know, we, we, uh, it's hard for anybody to overcome that. And so that certainly skews some of the stats that way. And that's what we'll be focusing on. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks.